Talk about it with Fran Jazz. Today we have three special guests. The founders of Yonkers Comic Con. Today's guests are Katori and Evan. And returning guest, Josh Dews. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Yes. Let, let's, let's run up the line. How are you guys doing today? I'm tired. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been all over the place. It's no, six. no, it's because we start our day and that we were doing this. We're up at like three or four in the morning, yeah. just getting our day together and running around and still trying to take care of ourselves in the process. So, but after October 5th, I think, yeah, we'll be like, phew. Nice. Yes. I like that. Yeah, feeling good, man. I think it's this is a beautiful time in our lives to really tap into some great opportunities that we've built over the years it's like the return on investment is is upon us and we're trying to tap in and not trying to we are tapping in and making some magic in the community so we're in the right space and thank you for having us here absolutely my pleasure you guys guys wake up at three four in the morning dude she said three we were up at 2 30 this morning like you set your alarms at two in the morning and wake up two Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Plan yeah. your work and work your plan. You got to get it done. Yeah, because wow. this project is so big. You know, what we're doing right now, it's a lot of moving pieces, and we don't have like a, you know, we don't have like a big team, yeah. you know. So we have to try to do everything and make sure that it runs smoothly. And, you know, our day starts so early now. Um, we do have some people that are helping us, but we're planning this comic-con and you know usually have like a production team of several people but we're really behind it we have a small team right now yeah. um and we have a lot of people who are helping and volunteering so we're ever so grateful but we're doing the work good good we're doing the work with wow. our small team it pays off definitely yeah, yeah. so by nine o'clock it's like we're in high gear as opposed to you know nine o'clock in the morning people are you know just starting it mm-hmm. nah it's like full steam ahead so yeah. damn i mean we really want to give a shout out if we can of course to erica soto she's been amazing to um felicia villanova villanova, villanova. villanova. Uh, she's Weva. gonna get me now <laughs> <laughs> um she's been amazing and you know we have yonkers fashion week who's been helping us as well and i don't want to miss anybody but those are you know right now we're in it and we're so happy to have um the support of so many people and foundations and organizations. Awesome. Yeah. Where were you guys born? I was born in Harlem. Boogie down. Um, born and raised, and truly understand that that foundation is giving me some good roots to to grow from. So. Yeah. You know, I was born in Harlem, but I was raised in Puerto Rico and St. Thomas. So I think that. Having that island um, flair also helped me with my city. So I kind of, I guess I'm the best of, best of both worlds. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, the necklace, the necklaces show <laughs> that like beach vibe, the, that island vibe a little <laughs> yes, bit. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I used to speak Spanish fluently, but I lost it. If you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Only when I get mad, something might come out. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know those words. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your, your childhoods. Oh, man. Born and raised in the Bronx, growing up in the 70s. A um, lot of great experiences, man. Mom's college professor, she realized that where we were at in University Avenue in the Bronx was changing the landscape. Single mother realized that she had to put herself in a better position to raise two young boys. My pops... Um, passed when I was eight months old. Um, however, she made some good decisions and made some sacrifices to, to give me and my brother a good life. And she moved from University Avenue to Riverdale. Um, Riverdale Yonkers or Riverdale? Riverdale, the Bronx. Bronx. Yeah, okay. right up there, Northwest. Um, went to school there, ran with the crew. So, you know, just understanding the power of extended family so we grew up in skyview so shout out to the skyview crew um and just was in the mix of something magical that the world has now celebrating 50 years of called hip-hop 
and to just to just be in it as a kid and watching my brother who was older just life transform man it was like you know what my mother was listening to and what my mother was influenced um wasn't wasn't what we were influenced by you know and i think every generation has their influences but the power of hip-hop um it's like you had to choose a choose an element and for me um tried to break dance and that was cute but wasn't really my cute. vibe. Cute. <laughs> um, you know, B-boy. yeah. I was shy. I always been an artist, so you know, the the MC was not even interesting to me. I was too nervous to to speak in public. Um, tried DJing, but you know, you got to spend money to be a DJ, and I was like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. So, Element of Graffiti kind of called me, and before I saw Star Wars and Wild Style. I was mesmerized, but when I saw that, I pledged allegiance to the spray can, and even to this day, um, I keep a can in my hand and just keep a like, can in my hand. <laughs> I like yeah. that. My hand, word. And your mom was a big, you know, supporter. His <laughs> mom was a big supporter to the point where yeah, she 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 used psychology to the nth degree. So she realized I was writing graffiti. Um, so one day, I was sneaking in to grab the cans to leave out to do some 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 things with my crew and i went into my little stash spot in the back of my closet and my cans were gone i was uh. like yo my i know it's not my brother and i said i knew my mother she i've been got <laughs> so <laughs> i kind of played possum act like i didn't know anything sitting at dinner kind of holding my breath, waiting for that punishment or that, you know, <laughs> that spanking at 13. Hmm. And she did the gangster thing, man. She came to me and she she realized that my passion for art was was in a space that she couldn't understand, but she knew that to stop it would gas it up. You know, I was at that age where if she said stop, I go. So she actually gave me a respirator and two fans. And she said, if you want to write graffiti, spray, spray paint in your room. I give you full permission to do whatever you want to do in your room. Wow. However, the rules are you got to turn the fans going out the, out the, the window, keeping the exhaust out. And she said, you couldn't sleep in the, you know, the, that night. You can't sleep in the room. So I had my light, nice little nest in the in the living room because I every day so while my crew was going out there and, and jumping on the tracks and and doing their things their risk yeah um I I had a safe space to to explore murals I had a safe place to explore spray paint and mom's I mean when you talk about sacrifices she you know a stick person is like her wow moment but she realized me as an artist was she invested in me. And it's so beautiful because last year um, I was co-curating an ex- exhibition at the Hudson River Museum um, called Hip Hop Heroes. And, you know, that was an aha moment because me and my mother sat back and was like, you know, inside the museum itself, I did, I spray painted three murals and had my art on exhibit with amongst a lot of phenomenal artists from Yonkers as well as Westchester and the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And my mom just looked at me and I looked at her and I was like, yo, thank you for that investment. Cause I'm, I run into a lot of cats that I, I ran the streets with and you know, they didn't, their parents didn't have, didn't support them. So at their, this age, you know, they've given up art, you know, because their support system. You, what are you wasting your time for and all those things? So that, yeah, hip hop, man, graffiti, trains, running the streets, wow. all that craziness. So it's it's a beautiful thing. So that's my upbringing. I played football, but that was more social than passion. Um, but I know that art was my thing. Has always been in continuous. That's beautiful. For sure. Mm-hmm. And you, beautiful lady. Well, because I grew up on the islands. I was actually raised by two great-grandmas, two grandmas, and my mom, and a little bit of daddy. (laughs) Um, My mom got divorced um, when I was three. And so, you know, she sent me off to great-grandma. I go on the islands, and I had, like, two different lives. 
-hmm. When I was on the islands, it was totally different than being here, you know. And so I would switch up, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And I loved it. I loved being able to be in between those two worlds and meeting people. And so I grew up, like, loving all people. It doesn't matter what race they were, what culture, because a lot of people... Europeans or anyone would come over and stay at my great grandmother's place. And so I played with people from all different backgrounds and nationalities. So I was really exposed to that at a young age. And I got to really know people and I became a real people person. So unlike Evan, who was shy, I'm very outgoing. Um, and um, then as I got older, like I didn't know like art was in me because my mom was like, no, she encouraged me by making, having me write stories and doing artwork all the time. But she was like, you're going to pick a profession where you're going to make money. <laughs> and so I was very, really, very strict that, you know, you follow the rules and you're going to do go in corporate America and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, no, but you could do the art and everything on the side. So I've had lots of careers I've done lots of different things, um, but something traumatic happened to me at one point in my life, and it changed me forever to the point that, you know, I can't have children. So in that pain, I started to draw art, and it came out with my Katori kids. I just, every time I picked up a paint, I was never formally trained. I would just do these, like, cartoon character, and it was, they were my babies, they were called Katori Kids, and that's how I healed myself. So I say healing for me was Katori Kids, and every time I paint one and I give it to someone or someone buys one, it's like I'm spreading my babies out in the world, the ones I can't have. And um, from that, uh, doing that, I was like, okay, I'm doing that, but I still stayed in corporate America. But then I became an entrepreneur. I had my own businesses, and I did a lot of different things, but that art was always in me, and writing and doing poetry and performing was always in me because I had a, I wanted to share my voice, and people appreciate it. And um, I guess four years or five years, I wrote my first play. It was called Ajuma, and I've been performing and doing different things. But this man right here, <laughs> he really made me do my art more he believed in my art i was kind of shy with my art as far as like putting it out there in the public i was doing a little bit of it um but i couldn't take criticism um of it because i felt like i wasn't a professional and but this was coming from my heart and he was like no you do your art don't worry about any what anybody else thinks you do it you express yourself if somebody likes it they like it don't worry about that and so I learned from him, and he encouraged me, and then he took me as under his wing. Oh, no. I learned how to do murals. Please. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, maybe <laughs> murals. <laughs> murals, and um, I learned to be more confident in my artwork. Yeah. So that's basically it. Um, I was also taking care, the last 16 years, I was taking care of my, great, my grandmother who passed um, in our arms. Yeah. At 100 years old. Sure. And so I was. I learned how to be a caretaker. And um, I did it from my heart. And yeah, so right now I'm in transformation. And when I met this guy, we just started doing things. All these different pro programs, like 100 Words of Wisdom, Wisdom, where he painted people's body with one word. Yeah. Seniors. Uh, over 141. Wait, you painted their body with what do you mean? What do you mean? One word of wisdom. So, <laughs> good question. Um, so what we did... Um, me coming from the Bronx into Yonkers, I knew that I didn't want to be considered another artist trying to sell paintings. Like, here, buy my art. Here, go. I, I, I do artwork. Buy. So it was like, how do I introduce myself to this community in a way that would be other than the normal? And at the time, mm -hmm. as we were talking earlier, um, we were doing body art. Um Katori was my human canvas and I would and it's I realized that through graffiti art I learned a lot of power behind colors, color theory, lettering styles, different things. So I used I wanted to shift my I just wanted to do something different. So body art was our was my thing. And we wrote a grant to Arts Westchester. They accepted the grant and we did a a project called 100 Words of Wisdom. So the, the 
the notion behind it was at that time I became a grandfather and I didn't consider myself not worthy, but it was like there's elders, real elders who've been done, seen some things. So we had a dinner, had a dinner with her mom, her grandmother. And I just asked her a simple question like, Yo, you know, Nana, what one word would you share with my grandchildren? And from that conversation came a beautiful experience where we realized the importance of asking more elders that question. What, what, what one, was the one word? Her word was? Focus. Mm. And, you know, yeah. from the, the, what grew from that was that Evan had an idea to, he's like, why don't we, we body painted her, well, we painted her hand, we put it on Instagram or one of the Facebook, 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 Facebook back then. Right. And it got so much, you know, love and like. And so when we had the opportunity to do this grant, um, Evan was like, why don't we do seniors? Yeah. And why don't we give them the opportunity to have one word of wisdom? They can only pick it and um, the word, I don't want to know what it is. And you can interview them because I like storytelling, mm -hmm. right? So you can interview them and they could get painted. Because what Evan didn't say yet was that when we were going out and doing body art, we were doing it in clubs. We were doing it in all these different places, yeah. out in the park, whatever. But there's something magical. And I'm now. not a face painter. Yeah, it's not a face painter. <laughs> like, there's something magical about, I, was, I would do guided meditation. So just imagine you're either sitting down or laying down and I'm telling you and I'm guiding you into this journey. And, you know, it's whatever journey that comes through. And then you can't open your eyes and you feel the paintbrush. So you hear my voice, you feel the paintbrush. Sign me up. People, yes, that sounds people awesome. were traveling. Yeah, that sounds it's awesome. People were Dude. traveling. People were falling asleep in the loudest place. You know, boom, boom, boom. They were like gone, going into the zone. And when they would wake up or come out of whatever it is or open their eyes and see it, it was like always a beautiful piece of artwork yeah. that he would do. So we decided to do this with this um, with 65 and years and older. It was originally supposed to be 100 people. Right. It ended up being 142 because he wow. thinks big. Yeah. And um, we got to learn about their lives and their stories. I didn't do the um, the guided guided um, meditation because I wasn't supposed to, but I would ask them questions. You interview and you took the photographs, and so I it took became the a photo exhibition. And what's powerful about it is that I wanted to. My challenge as an artist was how many styles can I produce? I didn't want it to be a cookie cutter, the same thing. So we asked. So the elders actually were in full control because they yeah. chose the word and the, their word couldn't be repeated. So once Nana chose focus, nobody else can choose right. focus. Um, but they also told us their three favorite colors and where on their body they wanted the body art. They could choose. So they were really in control of this whole experience and we were just there for the ride and to just sit down with so many beautiful elders from all cultures, all, all races. Backgrounds. Yeah. To just hear their stories, dude. Amazing. With just one word. Like, yo, what one word would you share? And eventually, you know, people are like, love, nope, taken. You know, <laughs> family, running, nope, taken. Words. So it's like. I want, they would just be like, on my elbow or on my. On your chest, on your head, on the Yeah, what was the thing. weirdest place you had? Where do we have the weirdest <laughs> place? <laughs> Out of 100 people. Yeah. yeah. gotta be weird. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. I when think the, a woman, she chose her mouth. Yes, the mouth. I was like, and was. she so she had to keep her mouth closed, and I forgot the word, but it was, it was so dope because, yo, listen, to to just be in their presence was intimate, but just to hear their stories. And the oldest one we painted was a hundred and two years old. Hundred and two, and she lived to a hundred and five. Actually, yeah, um, yeah, and so it's been, it was a journey. So that exhibit, beautiful kicked in the doors yeah that's it was awesome. like so we went to if anybody you know shout out to yonkers so we went to blue door art center that's where we had our exhibit and people were coming up in the paratransit they yeah. were coming up they, they was like so excited they were like some people were like some people even told us they told us stories that their family didn't know yeah wow. so we have like these secrets that we we can't share and some of them were like you know i'm glad because now you can share this because i didn't feel comfortable enough to tell yeah. my family this and i would say right now shout out to omar karem yes he was one of the 100 wow stars he 
transitioned yesterday. Yesterday morning. Um, rest in peace, Omar. We yes. love you. A fab- fabulous photographer. Yes, but and it, it was so. I mean, I even had my high school football coach and his wife get down. So. Wow. It was just it, so. It was a great. So that project kind of set the pace in what we do up to this Yonkers Comic Con. Right. So. And just in the middle, we did Yes Yonkers, Yes Yonkers Community Quilt. We had about 1,300 people yeah. got involved in that. So, you know, we do, when we do stuff, we do it big, as you can see. And the whole thing is connecting people. Like that project connected different people from different parts of Yonkers. Yeah. It wasn't just Yonkers. We had other people from different places. As long as you lived or worked or had family in Yonkers, you could be a part of it. Yeah. And that was amazing. Amazing. So it was about connecting people and making the community feel um, uplifted and motivated and empowered. How did you guys meet? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we have a secret too, right? Um, well, actually, we, we met through art. Um, I was actually exhibiting my art. Um, in White Plains. On the most rainiest day. <laughs> and I promised sideways. my Nana to take her to go. And she was like upset. And I was like, you're not going. I can't even see in front of the, the to well, drive. It wasn't just she wasn't coming to see me. It was called the Harlem Fine Arts Show. So that's some, you know, usually it's taking place in, in, Manhattan. in Manhattan, in Harlem. This time it came up and a friend of mine needed a ride as an artist. Westchester. And she was like, listen, why don't you show your work? And I was like, okay, I'll show my work. But I wasn't, I wasn't in for selling anything. It was my per it was literally um it was the artwork that I used to heal myself um at a time when I was questioning my identity. Um I was I taught for 15 years and you know, spirit told me to it, it don't this is done. Like, you know. I call it a sabbatical because I never say I'm not a teacher, but I knew that it was time for me to transition. And during that in between time of what I'm going to do, man, I just I I woke up and fell asleep with a paintbrush in my hand. Something I always wanted to do, but college, parenthood, responsibilities, I never had that chance to go wake up and go to sleep with a paintbrush in my hand, and literally. I created a body of work that was about healing myself. And that was the first time I exhibited. So when we were, when I was exhibiting the work, nothing was for sale. It's still part of my estate. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kutori, you know, I, I didn't feel, I wouldn't say, yeah, I didn't feel, I didn't feel confident as a public artist. I always done commission work, always done work for hire, but my, personal intimate work so I stepped back and I wasn't right there with my painting like hey there was my painting you I stepped back and I saw people looking at the art appreciating it but I didn't feel a need to communicate with them but Katori I guess the artist in her she looked at the art it was almost like she was analyzing every layer of every stroke and it was like I had to ask her like yo what do you see in that and when I asked her that question you know, that was when it was time for our, our spirits to dance this dance. <laughs> well, I mean, it didn't dance right away because... <laughs> we didn't dance right away. It didn't dance right away. Come on, baby. That sounded so poetic on my behalf. That was beautiful, though. That was beautiful. That was I'm beautiful. sorry. That was no, really No, go for it. Go for it. But wait, how long ago was this? Uh, this is 10, ten years, years okay. right? So we, so we, we didn't, you know... <laughs> it didn't dance right away. We just think I had a nice respect. Yeah, friendship, friendship yeah, with us. Like camaraderie. And for sure. Yeah, and then because um, we didn't know, and then we started meeting in at this diner, and then one day he was like, "When is your birthday?" And I was like, three twenty. He was like, "No," and it ends up his birthday is three twenty two. Wow. So we ended up both having the same birthday. So that's when I think a little tinkle went like. Ding, <laughs> well, for you, know? the first night he felt it. <laughs> <laughs> so on so what we do is um when we were doing body art it was 320 body art um we realized the power of of that piscean energy paint and, and the synergy professionals the paint and pamper professionals um but then we you know even before covid i just realized i personally felt like i did all i wanted to do with body art i'm good 
you know, I don't want to keep riding the wave until it just fizzles. Um, but we transitioned into into really doing more programming, more yep. educational yep. activities, mural work. So we transitioned it from 320 body art to 320 arts. So that's, you know, one of the major things. We do graphic arts. We do graphic design. Um and a host a of, of things. Art. Yeah, a lot of teaching with the, in the community. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So when the were you guys into comic books during the childhood, teen years, anything? Dude, we're on the same page. I think like literally <laughs> the exact we, same question. Good question. How yes. the, where's the comic books? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a little girl, um, I used to see other people, you know, reading comics and whatever. And I did get one comic book. Um, of course, I love comic books. Um, when I was younger, I would look at it and look at my friends' comic books and things like that. But I only owned like my own one. Um, but I've always, I always wanted to draw like a comic, like a superhero woman. What age was this? I would say I was about maybe 10 or right. 11. So I you weren't comic into comic books, but you wanted to do your My own. My friends were like, they would collect, um, the comic books and they would, you know, bring them wherever and I would see them. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, because already by that time I was writing my own little stories and drawing. Right. So to see a comic book, I was like, wow. So I got my first comic book, though. I don't think I got my first comic book until I was like 15. Remember what it was? No, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but I remember I took, I was trying to trace it. I didn't have tracing paper. Uh. But I remember the yellow paper and I was trying to put it and make it look. And I was really impressed. Um, but no, I wasn't. I had friends that were involved in it that liked it. But I never like pursued it further. Uh, for me, um, it was part of my childhood. You know, I can literally say that my reading comprehension was enhanced by getting involved in comic books. Older brother, you know, he was always three three years ahead of me, three steps ahead of me. Um, he is an artist, and to see him drawing the Hulk, I'd be in my room trying to draw just like him. <laughs> and, oh, just piles of paper, just lay, just crumpling them up. <laughs> But it was good because it, it, so yeah, so comic books, I was infused with it. And then when, you know, the cartoons started having Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man, I, I mean, that was, person. that was my thing. Um, and I did, I collected comic books, but once again, Star Wars, shout out to all the, the legendary graph artists that were that influenced me i realized i was transitioning so comic books or spray cans like it's like i i was in that teenage year so it was what like came first well the love of art or like the love, yeah, of, the love of comic art. books no i i was i've been drawing my mother remembers she i think she said two between two and three or four she caught me writing just kind of scribbling on the on the wall and she tried to scold me and she says, I don't remember. She said, I <laughs> took my stand like, I'm an artist. Like, <laughs> ah, like you cannot stop me. <laughs> so, she, so she, um, I guess she she read the writing on the wall like, yo, this kid is is here to do something. But I, I thank her because going back to giving the props to my mom, she, she wanted me to get a formal education. So she understood, you know, she wasn't going to be that type of parent. Say, go to college and become an astronaut. She knew if it's art, do it, focus on it, make it happen. And I graduated. Cum laude. Just found out right. that a couple of years ago. He wasn't even paying attention. Well, it wasn't that. I was I'm just messing with I was, you. I was raising <laughs> my son. So by the time it was, when I graduated, looking at the degree was like, I was like tunnel vision in pops mode. So I didn't even really look at my degree until years later. Like, oh, wow. So, I graduated cum laude. So, so let's talk but about go to comic. Yeah, going back yeah. to the comic books. Um, yeah, so I stepped away from comic books as a teenager, but had crew that religiously collected comics. So I was kind of, I, I love the, the term Erica used, she, she nerd adjacent. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> I, I was kind of there, but not fully invested. Um, but I, I realized that in this day and time, where we are as a couple, as artists, and the platform that we have in the beautiful city of Yonkers, um, we want to use our space to create a safe environment for creatives to really shine 
through comics and I oh, guess I want you to talk about the I am a hero okay. because that's really where this yeah. all came so, from to get to where we are with Comic Con let's, let's so talk about it I, I, I wasn't tapped into comics for decades like I wasn't collecting wasn't going to the stores looking for them or anything but I after I was at the time uh, 2019 I was substitute teaching in Yonkers and I figured, you know, I took a step away from teaching. I was like, I need to give back to the community. I want to teach young people. Let me jump in. So when I was in um, in the schools before COVID, these kids were vibrant, wild. And I was just loving their energy. And when we came back, kids were tapped out. They were drained. It's like, yo, you used to do backflips in the, in the hallways. And now you're just walking around like a drone. Like, mm. what happened to this place? Yeah. And, you know, I realized that so much was going, everybody experienced so much during that time, but no one was talking about it. So these kids, they had to have been affected with this. How do we get them to talk? So I'm going to this fifth grade class. I'm a substitute teacher. So I'm on the bottom of the totem pole. I loved it that way. So I can come and go the way I please. I'm walking into this class and Frances, I tell you, I, I know the night before I probably did an all nighter with some art. So I'm tired. Yeah, I was like, what are you going to teach them tomorrow? He was just like, I don't know. I'll give <laughs> so I'm get literally there. walking into this fifth grade class like, yo, what am I going to teach? 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 I stand in front of these kids and I'm like, okay, I got to do something. Every, some kids are on the computer. Some kids are sitting in the classroom with a mask on. In comes the principal. Mr. Bishop, we have to test the students. We need the test. And da, da, da. I mean, she, it was just almost like, it was like her voice was like somebody scratching a, a chalkboard. It's like, yo, you can't. And I was tired and already annoyed with her voice. It was like, so, so here comes, so she gives me a pile of papers for these kids to test. And I'm looking at her and I'm looking at the kids behind her. And I realized that, should I pause? No, keep oh, I realized that this was a defining moment. So Josh, what I did when the kids, when the teach, when the principal walked out, they looked at me and it was almost like help. Like, <laughs> don't make us do these things. So I literally took the papers, put them in the trash. And I, something wow. right then in that moment said, who wants to create a superhero? How old are these kids? These fifth grade. So you're talking probably like 10, 11, yeah. 12, you know. And when I said, who wants to create a superhero, they opened their eyes. They were wide, like, superhero, like, and I was just like, they knew I was an artist. I used my art to teach class, and so I'm an ELA. Dude, that is teacher. powerful. Yeah. That's like a stick it to the man. <laughs> that's a, that's a, Yo, let me, that is a powerful moment. Dude, let me tell you, that Ooh. was, as I said, it was a defining moment, and these kids, when they saw, so... What came to me, this became my talking point of how do we talk about these issues that everybody has seen, but nobody's talking about. So I asked them to tell me what a social issue is. What's a social issue? Some kids didn't know. Some kids knew. Well, okay, what's a social issue? It's an issue that doesn't just affect me. It affects a community of people. Okay, let's talk about social issues. So I started writing. You tell me I'm writing it on the board. By the time the class was over, we had 40 social issues from police brutality, from ageism to health care, to pollution of all types, to human rights, to animal rights. So what I told the kids we were going to do is I said, OK, when we come back and I was going to come back the next day, we're going to do something with this. And I ran home and asked Katori, what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> like, I had no clue. Like, I didn't know what we were gonna mm -hmm. do. So we came, we formulated a plan to take the social issues and develop a superhero. Mm. So, so the thinking now is, is that you're not really a superhero if you're not helping other people. So now, so the kids now have to choose a social issue. They have to choose one social issue and create a superhero out of it. But this is it. Man, you are creative. Listen. You are creative. So this is the this is the magic of what we do. So give me a social issue, Josh. Any social issue. 
Racism. Racism. Okay, so now, as as one of the students in the class, you have to choose three superpowers that you would need to deal with racism. But this is it. Ooh, that's, uh... This is it. You can't use a weapon. You can't. You can't harm people, pl animals, or nature. Damn, you're making these fifth graders use their yeah. brain. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Yo, that is. So yeah. what happened was is that this became a. There was a dynamic that was happening in that class. So I was reintroduced to comic books through this experience of challenging these kids to really speak their voice and not just talk about problems but come up with creative solutions that yes. do not destroy others so yeah. just to say i'm sorry real quick there was a young lady who chose racism mm -hmm. so in the back of my mind i'm like okay what you what, what you gonna bring to the table so she formulated she came up with this idea that her superpower was that she strips racists of the ability to see flesh, hair, and anything that would create a, a division. Mm. So everybody looks the same. So now you can't, and what, she, what the person sees, what she, she said, you can't see skin. So all you see, you're walking around, and all you see is the muscular structure and the, and the it's almost the like in the bones. Yeah. And so, you know, we have think tanks, so everybody challenges each other on a superhero and Somebody said, well, what happens when they learn, you know, they're learning a lesson and they're no longer racist? The spell goes away. And of course, somebody says, well, what happens if they come racist again? The spell comes back. So this became a fun way. And I wanted them to have their superheroes look like them. It's like you're the hero. So Katori, we coined the term and we came up with this workshop curriculum called I, I am, am a, a hero. hero. So it's called the I am a hero comic book creation workshops where these young people create a superhero based upon a social issue, but they go through the steps of the hero's journey of the, their origin story. You know, who is their nemesis? I mean, they, so it becomes this whole great experience. So this is something we started back in 2020. And also, I just want to just say yeah, real please. quick, is that not only was it like that, but we were giving children the opportunity to express themselves in ways that they may not be able to express themselves and by doing this we're giving them encouraging them to use their imagination and maybe fulfill something in them that they may not have an opportunity to do so we're sharing with showing them a whole new new world and sometimes when you're able to do that it eliminates some of the frustration that you might be having because now you're creating a story and Maybe you can make that happen. Maybe you can some way, if it's pollution now, do something in real life. Conflict but resolution. Exactly. I'll tell you what, it just this whole scenario, all this just made me use my brain more than I have in a long time. <laughs> like I'm I'm thinking of stuff in like situations and a story yeah. and character lines. Yeah, all that. There's, yeah. We, there's power we, to we that. We were seeing some of absolutely. the children absolutely feeling better, their mood lifted. Yeah. Um, if they were feeling in a space and being able to create something made them feel good. Like, okay, if I wanted to stop something from happening and I can't do it, maybe yeah. it's abuse. Maybe I'm being abused. That's true. And now I can't tell anybody. I can't, but I can create this hero that's going to stop abuse. So I'm doing mm. something. Even if it's not something that I'm physically doing, I can relieve that stress by creating yeah, created, it. Created. You guys are changing the world. If continuing to do this kind of, like that's changing the world. Real talk, man. People we need that. that. Yeah. Everybody needs that. The youth needs that. I need, everyone needs that. Well, interesting enough, um, so... Wait, sorry. What did the principal say about that? Oh, yeah, let's go back. I hope she's not back watching this. Principal. Well, she can watch it because, interesting yes. enough, Evan found a formula, and I started going to every class doing the same thing. You know, he's every, such a rebel. He does things like that. My thing was like, I, I want to be engaging. I want to do... So I, as an English language arts teacher... We're learning the English language. We're learning grammar. We're learning spelling. We're, so I'm using this platform of comic books to give them an opportunity to proofread, to learn vocabulary, to, to spell, to, yep. to publish. So every class I was, <laughs> so this was like Tuesday. By Friday, every class I went into, we were doing a comic book thing. Mr. Bishop, I need to see you in my office. Yes. Once again, I'm a substitute teacher. So I'm like, 
deuces if if you I'm ready yeah. to go, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I hear that you're doing comic books. Mm -hmm. I said, absolutely. And this is what we're doing. And this is what they're getting done. And it was so interesting because in one class, as a substitute teacher, it gives the teacher a chance to take a break. So usually the teachers just leave the class and it's like my time to shine. This one teacher, she decided to stay. I can care less. This is my time. When she, when the kids left the class, she said, that young man that you had be your, your assistant in collecting things and paint, she said, I've never heard him so excited about something. So I had a formula. So going back to the principal, I was He was in the principal's office. Yeah, yes, again. it was. <laughs> again. You know, that's the definition now of joining the system to beat the system or Ooh. show people how to beat the system a little bit. How yeah. about mm -hmm. that? That's yeah. real. So so, so the, teach, the principal, I'm not going to put, put a name out there. She, once I explained it to her, she sat back in her, in her chair and she said, we have a bulletin board in the front of the school. I'd like them to exhibit their end results. So I told them they're going to create a comic book. So we were able to have an art, a, a, a showcase of their work. So that was like, mm. that was, you know, yeah. sticking it to the, to the man yeah. and a woman That's or awesome. a principal. So that, so that we realized at that, and Katori trust and belief, she was my brain trust every step of the way. And Bianca's Arts, shout out to Bianca's Arts, Ray Wilcox, I had a conversation with him and he realized that what I was doing needed a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. So we he used his influence in that organization to plug me into different organizations throughout Yonkers. So we were doing this with different organizations yes. and we were plugging in. And so in Zoom too. On, to online. Yes. Yeah, we so, couldn't get to. Yeah. So, so we got to the point. Thing. We got to the point where it was like in 2021, it was like, we can take it bigger. 2022 came in Arts Westchester. This would, you know, they're a supporter of our efforts in the community. They came, there was a grant opportunity. So I was like, I talked to Art, um, Yonkers Arts and said, yo, if I apply for this, will you, will you sponsor us or will you be our fiscal sponsor? Without question, because it's already proven. It's not like some idea that I'm trying to make for the first time. And they supported us. And in 2023, last year, June 24th, we had our first experience. It wasn't called a Comic-Con, but it was, it was based upon people... Mm -hmm. I am, it was based upon I'm a Hero, creating an original. And that was another thing about the, the kids. Your superhero has to be original. You can't bring Spider-Man into your world. Mm -hmm. If it already exists, it's banned. It is so cool because the kids were kind of policing each other. They were like, no, 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 you can't use that name because, and I didn't know because <laughs> I was kind of tapped out. But so we, we did it last year on a very small scale, but we knew that we had to plant the seed. And this year... We are taking it to a whole nother a level. A whole nother <laughs> level that Let's keeps us getting it. up at two o'clock wow. in the morning. Yeah, so Let's, you'll realize. Let's talk about it. October 5th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. What yes. do we have going on? Wow. So we realized we had to do our homework. Um, I have to be transparent. We are not. We are geek adjacent. We are nerd adjacent. We are comic book fans adjacent. So we had to do our research and we realized we had to, and cosplay adjacent. We had to partner with people that know the culture, that live the culture and that are about that culture. So what we did is the first thing we realized is that if we're going to call it a comic con, we need to embrace the cosplayers. Um, so we connected with Catherine Shula, um, who's a brilliant um Mine in her, in our own right, she has an organization called Cosmoda that uses cosplay on levels of Fashion Week of mm. New York Fashion Week. She just finished another one uh, one last uh, last week. So we realized that her influence and she was supporting us back when we were doing body art. We wanted to partner with her. So when we had her on board, we realized that this was this would help us to legitimize our platform in Yonkers. Um, but we knew, Katori and I realized, we're not just going to open up the floodgates to just be 
another type of Comic-Con. Respect to all the Comic-Cons, but how can we do it different in Yonkers? Number one, our mission is always to support artists. We want to make sure that we're creating a platform for original superheroes created by published, unpublished, um, professional and emerging artists. So we have one of the standout spaces in this Comic-Con is called the Hall of Heroes. And that is where superheroes that have never been seen before and have <laughs> not had, well, I'm not going to say that because if you're published, you do have it. Right. You do have a platform, but we want to celebrate original superheroes. So every superhero that is going to be in that exhibit, it's going to be an art exhibit, but every superhero is an original. It's not going to be someone drawing Thor. It's not going to be someone drawing Batman. It's going to be someone who, who sat down yeah. and thought about everything. And created and something created original. It. Yes. So that is truly, that's the That's, that's the what makes it different. And that's the foundation of what we do. Because my our, our vision was not to just let Marvel and DC take over Yonkers and us just wave a flag like, we're Comic-Con. We want them to take a front seat and check out these original creators. And they don't have to be from Yonkers. They don't right. have to anywhere in the world as long as it's an original superhero. And what's so phenomenal is that Katori last year, she she was during this hiatus of preparing oh, for the Comic Con. on me now. <laughs> during this hiatus of preparing for this Comic Con, she went on a cruise. And she went to she went to California to visit her family. This is my family who I haven't seen yes. in like 17 years. Love to the years. family. <laughs> okay. It's a little Thank therapy you. session here. <laughs> um, but so what happened was is that she wasn't here to, to create her work. So while but she was, I was working behind the scenes yeah. before that. But what she was doing is she, her and her cousin in California, she created a superhero using AI. And we were like, and and I was like, yo, you you in it, so you're gonna be exhibited. So we exhibited the first AI superhero last year, and we realized I, I would say that last year I had lofty dreams of the Comic-Con. So and I think I scared some people away in in the sense that I was I wanted them to create a comic book, like yeah. create an original comic book with an original superhero. So when you hear comic book, that doesn't mean you draw one superhero. That means you got to draw that superhero probably 30 or 40 times doing different things. And we, the response we got, everyone who submitted, I salute you. You did your very best. Yes, you did. But I had to scale that back. So now the Hall of Heroes is showcase your superhero as if it is on the front of a comic book cover. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is draw it once and you can use AI as long as you give credit to AI. Don't tell us that you drew, you, you know, you use your, your hand to create it. So we're incorporating, we're welcoming because it's a different, it's a different tool. All art forms. Yes. And what we realize is that there's some brilliant minds that, that may not have anatomy 101 under their belt, but they have brilliant ideas. So if you decide to use a, a, a artificial intelligence. AI graphic. just for the graphics of it or AI to because I could go on a chat yeah. GPT and be like write me up a, yeah. a but you know Marvel what? story or right something. so, so I, where's the gray line where's the I, that's boundary it. with that I say integrity and we're not here I'm not here to to police that I'm here to say if if you say that that's yours you got to give credit to the AI platform that generated the image but we're not holding people heavy on the story, on the backstory. You can share it if you want to. I just, once again, I just want to have a Hall of Heroes, which is one of probably 10 things happening on October 5th that just showcases a, some, a hero that nobody has seen before. And I have to tell you, though, it, it's pretty interesting because the people, the, the majority of the people that we know that did submit um, came from our classes that we were giving. Mm. Um, so we saw them putting in the work um, and they were really into it. So even if they generated it from AI and got ideas, they did put the work into it. Um, other yeah. people that we don't know that submitted it, their stories are very interesting. And um, it can it, it seems as if they really cared about their character by the questions that they asked and how developed they were. And so, they're proven or they're proven artists that are already published with their right. own comic books. So yeah. they get props as well. So that's one of the things taking place. Oh. Let, let's uh, let's yeah. run through the uh, the the events yes. that day. Yes. It's it's 
a, quite a few hours, six hours total, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. What's happening throughout the day? Good question. Okay. Um, so we have yeah. the Hall of Heroes, and then we also have the Creative Choice Award. We have the comedy show. So we, not the comedy. Why do I say uh, uh, comedy? Uh, you think the comic, comic, book show. comic book show. We have a comic book show with a set of panels that we're still, you know, we're working on right now. But we have a host so you know how well, in Comic Cons they have this symposium. Yeah, I've never been. I okay. don't know how they work. So, so traditional things that there's always a a an opportunity for people to hear from professionals in the industry. So we wanted to do that, but we want to keep it Can fresh. So instead of us having just a panel of a table of six people with microphones in front of them answering questions, we've invited um, a Marvel. Um, legend Jim Salacrump, who has put his work into making Marvel what it is, he's going to be the host and he's going to have like a talk show, mm -hmm. kind of like this vibe where it's like he's going to sit there and he's going to invite one person at a time and just ask or a few questions. Or we might change it up. Okay. Right? So, but the whole point, <laughs> but the, the whole point of it is, <laughs> yeah, I got to say, what the whole point of it is, is that um, it's going to be like a, 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 a tonight show yeah. instead of just having, you know, so it's it'll be, be that vibe. People... It'll be a different vibe to do it like that. He wanted to have it like a, a like a show. Yeah. So instead of just like calling it a panel. So we're going to have that. Um, we're going to have um, a, a creation. Um, what is it called? The Creators Choice, Choice Award. Awards. So one of the things that we did from the onset of last year is we wanted to award people. We call it the Creator's Choice Award, and we want to honor people who kind of who paved the way or or did something to shift the industry. Last year, we we celebrated a gentleman, Ace Man DC Hall, brother from from the Bronx and Harlem. Um, he actually published the first black superhero, and this was I mean it's dated before Black Panther, so improving. And we wanted to celebrate that. So his he he transitioned, but his son flew from California to be there and to showcase his father's work. Shout out to you. What was um, it called? And the first one was called Little Little Zhang. Little Zhang was the first um, black superhero. This year we're going to be celebrating Mark Grudenwald, and Mark Grudenwald he's considered. Everyone knows about the Marvel Universe. Mm. The reason why Marvel from my understanding and my learning is that the reason why Marvel is so successful is that there's a consistency in every storyline of every superhero. Every superhero doesn't just jump from here to here to here. There's a consistency of every hero. Mark Grudenwald, Stan Lee credited Mark Grudenwald for being that person. They called him the continuity cop. So when, when editors or when artists were, were about to put out a comic book, they had to go to Mark and Mark knew every line of every every superhero, and he was the one who said, "No, no, that that superhero can't do that because it does. Yeah. It's not consistent with everything else." So he's uh, FBI detective. Yeah, he's that guy. <laughs> so he's no longer with us, but his wife Catherine Schuler, who does the cosplay, she's his his advocate. So we're going to be honoring Mark Grudenwald at for the second annual um, Creators Choice Award. Yes, and then we're going to have a f cosplay fashion show. Yes. We're using two of the local, um, we asked two of the local fashion houses to be a part of it. We're going to have performances. We're going to have poetry. Uh, we are going to have dance. Um, and we're going to have P uh, uh, Cape for a Cause, where they are demonstrating how cosplay can also um, have people in it that are differently abled. Differently abled. Yes. Um, and what's that? Yeah, what so, like in a wheelchair. If you, if you, I don't. We don't use disabled. So differently abled. So you have a different ability, but may, you may not have this one, but you have something different. Um, we're going to have. So that's going to be like entertainment and people wearing like really cool clothes. Um, we have Cosmoda, of course, and that's going to be cosplay with all the different. Let's name the names: Yonkers Fashion Yonkers Week Fashion and Week. Westchester, Westchester Fashion, Fashion Week, Week as yes. well. Um, in our, then we're going to end it with a community. Uh, community fashion show uh, we're coming up with the name with that but basically 
giving the community a chance to do yeah. their cosplay and walk down the aisle. So you're going to see people in the community that came in that day or registering on our website to be a part of it. And it's going to be lots of fun. Because and we're hoping get to that somebody up. saved yeah. all of their boxes from Amazon and just comes in like a robot with their boxes. <laughs> like anything yes. you want to wear, as long as it's safe, it's non-offensive, and all that other stuff. Uh, you had a question, Josh? No, I just, sorry. I just no, it's cool. Yeah. I see you got New York State Senate as a sponsor. Wow, yes. Big ups to, we just yes, posted it on our, on our Instagram. Big ups to, yes. Say the name. Mm. Majority, Stewart Stewart Cousins. Majority yes. leader, uh, Andrea, Andrea Stewart, Stewart Cousins. Big ups it. to her. She, she, has, she was actually part of 100 Words of Wisdom. So mm-hmm. she has been supporting our art journey in Yonkers. So big ups to, and yes, to her team. Andrea Stewart Cousins, you remember yes. me from the uh, from the 914 Inc. party. Okay. She personally handed me uh, an award. Oh, there you go. congratulations. So she, yeah, she's, yes. a, she's a, a great gem. lady. She's amazing. From Yonkers, yeah. represent Her daughter danced at my parents' dance studio, too. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. See? That's how I, I've seen That's that, and I was do. like, <laughs> I've been I know. dying. You've seen me. I saw to, you get yeah. hyped on that. Yes, yes, I was yes. like, I knew this is Andrew, behind Andrew's Yeah, story, yeah truly. Yes. So she, we just went to, we, we. so the goal for us gentlemen is how do we, just like all the other projects that we've done, how do we bring people together? And this project is not only bringing geeks, nerds, and everybody who's comic book fans, but it's bringing businesses together. How can you be a part of this so we have more dance? A ballet ballet company, a dance company. Modern dance. Modern dance. They're coming in. They're going to do a performance. We have... You know, we have so many. What, what's yeah. so what's many Legoland doing? Ooh. So, <laughs> Legoland. Thank you, Legoland. Thank you. Um, so they're going to be there, um, showing the showing kids how to build with Legoland um, with Legos, and they're also going to have a tournament. For the kids as well, first come first, first, come, serve. first serve <laughs> yeah. as well. Um, we have Ghostbusters. They're yes. going to be coming. They're going to bring their. Octo, ectoplasmic mobile. I, I'm probably jacking it up. Yeah, so, so that's going to be yeah. cool. We're going to get in trouble. Don't try to pronounce Again. it because we're going to get in trouble because we're not sure how to pronounce it that well. But yeah, so they're going to be bringing that. Um, it's exciting. Pokemon. We, you know, we have a whole bunch. Yeah. We don't want to And we have vendors. We have a lot of vendors coming in. Yeah, we have Vendor um, so, Ali. So, and all of that to say, Yonkers Public Library yes, thank has you. given us the 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 open gate to make that Yonkers Comic Con headquarters. So we have things going on in the auditorium, in the atrium, Video in the entrance, in in the, in the costumes. Yeah, uh, the Yon. Asian, Asian lady that yeah, runs it. I know Yon. Yon. Yeah, yeah, she's a she's a Yon. she's a, yeah. she's a she's a power horse. Yes, I know her, yes. yeah, she's a she's a so, giant. Yep. And people yep. see her and don't even understand how powerful she is. She was part of 100 Words of Wisdom. So you see how that Making first project. We're more connected than you think. I know <laughs> these people. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So and you know we're telling the truth. Yeah. We are no, doing the truth. Jan. Yeah. I was, I was at the warehouse like a year ago. It's phenomenal. My isn't parents it? use her, uh, use them for their costumes Absolutely. for their dance shows. So, so we have the Sick Film School. A film school in Yonkers. They're gonna be. Um, they've been supporting us. They're gonna, you know, put something in the mix w- um, with us. So it's once again, it's all of these businesses, all of these organizations coming together under the umbrella of Yonkers Comic Con. And my hashtag has been for a long time: Yonkers wins. So mm-hmm. everything we want to do, Yonkers wins. Yonkers, you like that. Yonkers love. Yeah. There you oh, go. Really? Like Yonkers love. Yeah. There you go. Yonkers so win, we hope that love. everybody joins us. It is. Free October fifth, eleven 5th. to October five. 5th. Yonkers Riverfront Library. Yes. Remember that because it's, you know, there's two yeah. libraries here. And the it's Riverfront dope. Library, one Larkin Center. Yes, free, free. And we want people to also. It's free, but we would love for you to also register. So if you go to yeah. Yonkers Comic Con dot com, right. and when you first get there, you'll see click a, a button that you can go and click that, and then you can register. So we can know how many people yeah. are there, which would be cool. But then we still looking for volunteers yes. which would be cool and um the artist closes the artist yeah, by the time this views yeah oh yeah it'll, it'll be, be over um but <laughs> we have we have so many things happening and if you didn't if you didn't you know 
hopefully people will do the well we have some people a lot of people doing cosplay but yeah we're looking for more it's going to be a great experience and just the power of this is that it's location 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 so literally metro north minutes from manhattan minutes from peak skill you can just all you do is walk across the street from the yonkers train station and you're there so you know, there's no excuses. If you don't want to deal with parking, just jump on the Metro right. North and come through. And so all this for magic. next year, because yeah. next year is going to happen. We're doing this is now, we've committed this to make it not only an annual event, but we are we have the the mechanisms to make this a year long programming. Yes. So because of the I am a is. hero, we can do programming, and we want to include animation. We want to include digital art. We want to include merchandising. How do young people take their their superhero idea and self publish? So what we did to to partner with the Yonkers Public Library is before this. every every week leading up throughout the summer, from the beginning of of July to the end of August, we were doing workshops once a week to prepare to help and introduce young people or anybody to aspects of, of comic books, whether it's how to draw anime or Afrofuturism or, you know, traditional, you know, Western superheroes, how to create cosplay. We had a gentleman from Jan, um, big ups to you, Dan. Dan came through and he showed people how to create cosplay, a, a cosplay... Um, uniform? Uniform, costume. yeah, costume or piece of it using... EVA foam, which That's I was, so I'm a student in that regard because I wasn't familiar with it. But, you know, big ups to everybody. This is this is a phenomenal experience. Um, we've attended a few Comic Cons this year. Those people, we're bringing, you know, we're inviting them to come. And we just know that f this is, there's a magic to this because it takes people away from their everyday lives. People can either create superheroes that go beyond their their normal life or they can dress up and be somebody in an amazing way and yeah. there's I think Fran Jez was saying he wanted to participate in the ask. cosplay oh, show. Oh, oh. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about cosplay, but I am going to be there helping out volunteers. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. But we if you were to be a superhero, what superhero would you be you know, if I'm, you create I something? I would have to make something? No, yeah, no, no. You create it, or you, you can just... Create, like, well, let's just say you can snap your finger. something that you want to see changed in this world? Oh, that's If you had the power to do that, what would you do what would you change? That's deep. Yeah. So, so that's what we want people to think. Like, what would you change if you could? If yeah. money didn't mean so anything. So what would be your social anything? issue, I guess, would be a good... Like, right. you said racism. No, so. that's a, that's not what my answer would be, though. I just... I don't know why that was the first yeah. thing that came to my mind, but... Social issue. Like, what, what would you want to solve to make this world a better space? Get out could. of the normal. Break out of the mundane. Mm. Yes. Fucking express yourself. First curse of the podcast. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> it was perfect. It wow. slipped out. It slipped out. Timing, timing, yeah. timing. Well, that's the passion of being your no, own but hero. Just express yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Take that bow tie off and throw it on the ground. You yeah, know, like, okay. Mm, Get stick out it of to boxes. the man, like that's it. That, that would be the name. Stick yeah. it to the man. Yeah, stick it hero. to the man. That, All that's right, the superhero. What about you? What would you? You do? know, I, I never thought of this, but if I would have to just, just say anything, it's opening people's minds to not stressing little things that don't matter. But I don't know how to. I don't know how to word that into a superhero. You just did. You did. Yeah, you just did. Right. <laughs> you Open your mind and, and yeah. be stress free. I yeah. mean, don't focus on the little negative things that yeah. don't really matter. Don't really affect you the way you think they affect you. If and I what could. what comic mm -hmm. books does is it gives That's us great. that that space to that to breathe <laughs> in a way that normal life doesn't. So a comic book, you can read a comic book. You can create a comic book that just takes you to another galaxy completely. And if you look at what these masters did using comic books, it was to create, it was to look at and address issues that everybody deals with in a creative way. You know? I love it. Yeah. So love it. big ups to, um, oh, Joseph Campbell. I just found out Joseph Campbell. So Joseph Campbell came up with the idea of the, the hero's journey. Love that. Yeah. The hero's journey and what the hero's journey is is it's a formula that that every hero deals with from going from a normal life to a conflict to how do they come to the other side and actually the formula 
is seen in every good movie. Absolutely. Star Wars. I mean, you can name any good movie that where there is a hero. It doesn't have to be a superhero, but someone who triumph is triumphant. Joseph Campbell came up with the concept of the hero's journey, and I just found out he went to he taught at Sarah Lawrence College in Yonkers for for thirty years. Wow. I, yeah. So wow. you talk about six degrees of separation. We kind of based our "I Am a Hero" project pro, um, workshops out of you know this hero's journey, and he. His energy was in our neighborhood, you know, so in our want, city. We want people to come and celebrate, be yeah. themselves, or be support something other. other people, or be something other, and yeah. also support other people. So I'm telling people, okay, you know what? Maybe you're not into all that, but at least come and support other people yeah. in the community, and you're bound to find something. Or maybe you'll run into someone you haven't seen in 50 years. That's happened in our in our programs in the past. Yeah. So just come out, support, or just if you're not sure, just be curious about it. Um, everybody's and respectful. welcome. And, and, and respectful, respectful yes, we wanna, of course. We want to make sure that it's a safe place where yeah. people who want to express themselves are not ridiculed, not disrespected. We got no tolerance for that. And um, right. we know so that our intent is is pure and inclusive. So we welcome yes. that. I love it. Yeah. Please let the people know where they can find you. And the Comic Con, everything Yonkers Comic Con. So Instagram Yonkers Comic Con, um, email Yonkers Comic Con at Gmail, Facebook website Yonkers Comic Con dot com. <laughs> um, we really pushing this. We we have so many other things that we do um, in the community, but this is what we came here for to discuss with you. Um, so we, well, we thank think you. we gave you a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have a lot to talk so about. So we thank you for, for allowing <laughs> us to use your absolutely. platform. Big ups to Captain Erica. She is yes. she is part of our team. She's the one who who's yo, let me tell you, I say this. I am helium, she's earth. It's like I go and I just start floating. Katori pulls me back to reality, and she has found a powerful team of of people who believe in what we see and what we're doing we're and making some magic happen. So big ups to the entire team, everyone who's committed to making this successful on October 5th. Um, you'll see the magic unfold the way it needs to. And it's just going to get bigger, better, yes. and just brighter. We want to put Yonkers on the map for this. So yeah. this is the humble beginnings. So you guys captured a group. Just a Perfect interview. Hope, this. Hopefully, this episode comes out before October fifth. <laughs> no, this, this, <laughs> no, but which this is, is the best plug I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you are you are the most passionate man. Oh, uh, like, thank you, brother. This is like yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's true. So it's when knowledge. I ask you what is your gift, I I ask it because I I know some people, you know, people walk away from me and may not know it, but just asking it, asking somebody, it is my gift to them. Like. Think about it. You know, everybody comes here with a gift. And I know since early on, I'm an artist. Like, pff, whatever I do, if it's not art, I probably will not be too invested in it. And I know that this platform is, I'm passionate about it because it's about celebrating. So many creative. questions yeah. were spewing in my mind while this whole podcast oh, was going on. But I just, didn't get a chance. I'm I took sorry. the, I took the step back. I don't know. You know, so another much. question he says real quick is that, and I just have a quick story. It was funny. Another question he, he asked, he has some really great questions. Um, and one of the questions is, what would you tell your like five-year-old self? Like, that's a cool one, right? And then, but one time, sometimes what I love, what's amazing with him, he'll get these conversations going with people when we go to places and then may not exchange their number, you know, whatever, or information. And you know, they might not know what it is or they thought about it and then it could be weeks years later they'll come to him and say i remember when you asked that question and here's the answer like they're excited they're like oh i met you and blah blah, blah. and i'm just like standing there like okay and he's like it's like sometimes you just plant that little seed yeah. and you don't even know you made them think yeah you ma made them in a way think. they never thought before yeah. yeah and in a way they were never tested before and they held on to that thought until they met him again and was able to. And I see the passion of what they're saying. And I'm like, wow, that really <laughs> sparked it. 
spark something in somebody. This was a dope moment. I appreciate well, we it. I appreciate it too. Appreciate the time. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, actually sure. comes out the Wednesday Woo! right after the Comic Con. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. But yes. so you heard it here <laughs> live. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. We're so appreciative for this opportunity. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Of course, of course. My <laughs> pleasure. Meeting both. My of you. pleasure. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, 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 it's shout out amazing. to the chinchilla chilling in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> chinchilla chilling. <laughs> Josh, any last words? Uh, can, I, can I ask like one question before? Of course. I had a couple questions. A couple of deeper questions. Let's go. I Ooh. like it. Yeah. Uh, you said he's a rebel. He's, you, you've been well, he's a touching rebel on with that the subject course. of you being a rebel. You said your mom growing up supported you as an artist. What if she said no? Wow. What would have happened? Mm. Would you have like rebelled and made crazier art or... What would have happened? I don't know. Dude, I tell you, um, that's, that's an excellent question. I'm glad I don't have to think about that. Talk about because, it. Because, you know, as a kid, um, drinking, you know, exploring, just, I know that I was in pain not having that father in my life. So I was using every excuse to harm myself but art was that that tether. It was like art was the thing that kept me grounded. So while every art didn't require communication with others, art did not require permission, I can just whoosh, and just draw. And for all the teachers who gave me bad comments about my notebook because it had a whole bunch of artwork, <laughs> chill. I, was, I knew what I was doing. But I think that, um, I don't know, man, that, that's a paradigm shift. Like, it, what if that's like that's a wild I don't know why that thought no that's mind, crazy but, but yeah. because it who knows like because you were under you you escaped the cops one time and you, he rode underneath the yeah. train he mm. could have died but like rebellion uh yeah. evokes like good art too like yeah. think of all the artists that are just rebels because my mother it, just because my mother let me paint in the room doesn't mean I just Lock no, myself. He didn't I'm become still, a goody oh, that, goody. Was, that was my on. that was my other question. Yeah, there's dude. just like no 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 no. There's just like graffiti gangs like that just go out and graffiti. Yeah. Like that's it. Like I'm going out to graffiti yeah. with the boys. But you know what it did? That's how it was. It it, it helped that's me wild. to not need that affiliation. It's like I don't need I, I don't need it. So in my age now, I go to spaces and places and I I see cats who who been bombing and writing for years with each other and i i was always able to step back from that and i think it was kind of a, two worlds because as an athlete i didn't want them to know that i was writing graffiti and as a graffiti writer i really didn't cross the stream so while i was playing football it was like you know so it was two different worlds that i kind of like yeah like clark kent and superman my yeah. superman was really the, gra the graffiti artist but that's interesting. Now you got me thinking, bro, about that. Yeah, see? So now what it's if... your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this that's good. I see. That's all I got for now. There yeah. were a couple other questions, but I think I might have forgotten them in, while you. we're in the moment. Yeah. No, I appreciate Thank that, you. man. That's good. Thank you, everybody, for your time, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, the, and the Comic Con, Yonkers Comic Con yes. founders. Like, you're really making a difference in the community, and yeah. that's that's really the most beautiful part about it. We're excited. We want to make sure that people know that they are worthy. Yeah. Not just the mask. You know, we all put up a mask in the front, and then there's so much behind it. Yeah. And his favorites saying is you are worthy yeah so you're worthy everyone's worthy for sure so remember that you're worthy hug yourself and nurture the inner child in you yeah and relax your shoulders <laughs> back to back to back you guys got yeah. great Yo, advice for real. <laughs> <laughs> i love it thank if thank you made you. it this far you guys are champions thank you very much i hope you got some of this beautiful gems Saturday, October 5th, from 11 to 5 p.m. at the Yonkers River Front Library, One Larkin Center in Yonkers, New York. Free event. Bring the family. Bring your weirdness. Bring your masks. Yeah. Bring your costumes. Come have a great, safe, fun day. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Peace and love. Respect. <laughs>